Let's move directly to our top story, and that is the video that has emerged of the Princess of Wales shopping over the weekend as she smiled in the company of her husband. The couple are dressed casually and both carried bags from a farm shop near Windsor. But despite the proof that Kate is in London and recovering well, um, crazy conspiracy theories about her are still running rampant online. Cynics have tried to say that it's a body double walking with Prince William in the clip, or indeed that it's not the two royal uh, couple at all. Joining me in the studio, Talk TV's Royal Editor Sarah Hewson, and down the line, we have Royal Commentator Afia Hagen. Thank you both for joining me. We'll start with Sarah to just fill us in, because certainly um, Sky have done some detective work on, on this particular bit of film, haven't they? Yes, isn't it quite remarkable that we're in a situation now where organisations, TMZ in the United States, Sky here, are having to do face matching technology on this footage to try and assess whether it's real or not. Yes. But uh, this footage was filmed on Saturday at Windsor Farm Shop, just close to Kate and William's Adelaide Cottage home. They were, had been in shopping, looking at some loaves of bread, apparently, according to the fellow shopper who filmed it, uh, and then seen walking out. Now, on the surface, this should be so reassuring, shouldn't it? Here she is. Here they are together. They're near their Windsor home. Kate looks great. Uh, she's walking, carrying her bags. It's the first time we've seen her up on her feet and actual moving footage of her since Christmas Day. Mm. Uh, should have quashed many of those conspiracy theories. Unfortunately, it hasn't done that. And as you said in the introduction, we are now in this uh, world where people are suggesting that it is AI that's been used or body doubles, lookalikes that have been used. Uh, to take the place of Kate. But the metadata has been analysed, face matching, and it's very much them. And it's them, and it's them in what looks like really excellent form. And it's them exactly where in the world they said they were going to be, because we were told that Kate would be convalescing at home at Adelaide Cottage in Windsor with her children, with her husband. We've seen her spotted in the car, um, on the school run with her mother, Carol Middleton, driving the car. So we've seen that. We know that she's there. And one mile down the road at the local farm shop that they both like is exactly where we would expect to see her, isn't it? And she has been going to and from school to see her children. She watched them in sports matches yeah. over the weekend. She has been there, but people have been respecting her privacy uh, and not filming her. Uh, this footage was filmed by a member of the public. Now, under normal circumstances, that wouldn't have made its way onto television, onto the front page of a newspaper, mm -hmm. for example, because it was filmed in their private time. But there is such a news interest in this story now. And when the story was first published that she'd been seen out and about, People didn't believe it online. And so the Sun said they then made a decision, OK, we'll show you this footage in order to put an end to those conspiracy theories. And it hasn't. And I think we're now in a, in a scenario where there, are, there is a sector mm. of society out there that just isn't going to believe anything now about this. That The speculation has become fevered and fantastical, yes. to be honest. And, and, and the fear this has become utterly ludicrous, hasn't it? And, 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 and really the best thing to do with people who refuse to believe that it is Kate and it is William and they're a mile from their own house at a shop that they go to regularly and a member of the public happened to be there and film them. It wasn't a plant, it wasn't a, a, a member of the paparazzi, it wasn't some kind of strange member of some international spy ring. It was just a member of the public buying a steak who looked up, saw them and thought, oh my God, that's Kate and William, took a film. We've now all seen it. It should surely be end of. And if it isn't, then what? is absolutely right is that we are now in this kind of strange place where there's people who will not believe anything uh, that is put out because they feel that the trust has been broken and actually also because of all of these conspiracy theories online is that people are starting to believe that more than what they see in front of their very eyes you know people doing face matching and swapping pictures and all the rest of it and saying that that is not them. There is certain people who are now just going to believe nothing that they are told when it comes to the Prince and Princess of Wales. And that is a real shame. And I think that's partly because we have had this vacuum of information for so long is that people just filled it and they filled it with stuff. They filled it with sort of this fantastical nonsense. And that's why we have got to the place where we are now and actually when we kind of peel back all that 
stop drinking the Kool-Aid and mm. calm down. You know, what we're not doing is giving someone who's had major surgery the chance to recover in peace. And I think all this kind of speculation, which is more than reach fever pitch at the moment, is not good for anyone, but it's something that's going to be very difficult for Kensington Palace in particular and the Prince and Princess of Wales to shake off mm. because, like I said, that trust has been broken and it's going to be very difficult for that to be rebuilt. And, and Sarah, you know, we've been discussing this earlier, the, the idea that, you know, many people may have to hang their heads in shame when uh, the Princess of Wales does what it has been suggested that she's going to do, which is when she feels ready and if she feels ready and at the right moment, actually address what has been wrong with her and maybe do, you know, what the king has done and, 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 and you know, put publicity, uh, direct publicity towards whatever it is that has afflicted her so that people who are suffering from the same thing might get treatment more quickly. She might save lives in so doing. You know, she might do all of those things and apparently has suggested she might do them when she's ready. And when she does, if it turns out that, you know, she's had something very serious wrong with her or whatever it is, people will have to be ashamed of themselves and very sorry, won't they? Yeah, and I, I think she has clearly been through a tremendous ordeal. Yes. You know, to be in hospital for two weeks and to require three months recovery at home, we know that this has been serious, mm. physically serious, but also the mental pressure that she will now have been under with this whole where is Kate conspiracy theory, the huge row that blew up after... You know, that gesture of the Mother's Day photograph, which was supposed to reassure and backfired. And then this ongoing uh, speculation. And of course, they're aware of it because this isn't just something that's lurking, um, you know, hidden away no, in, in corners of the Internet. It is everywhere yes. and, and it is all over the world. And um, it has become a, a phenomenon, really, this where is, is Kate. Mm. And that will have put them under a lot of pressure. That we know that, that there is a lot of planning going on as to how she makes her comeback. And Kensington Palace said she might talk mm. about what has happened. Yes. And I think, you know, when she does, if she does mm -hmm. feel able to do that, there will be a lot of people who, you know, should be feeling very ashamed. Yes, that's absolutely. Not giving her the space uh, to recover as they were asked to do. Afia, do you think there are discussions at Kensington Palace, do you think there are discussions about the possibility of, for example, what didn't happen, which was the original undoctored uh, or unedited picture being shown so that they say, well, look, okay, we changed, you know, Louis was 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 frowning, we changed that. You know, Kate's uh, uh, trousers were slightly creased, so we changed that. There was a cushion slightly obscuring Princess Charlotte's knee, so we changed that. So you can see it was innocent, it wasn't a big deal. This was the original, this is the one we showed, combination of those two, nothing to see here. Do you think there was a discussion about whether they should do that? That's one question. And do you think there are just discussions now about whether something should be said to address this where is Kate business or do you think if mm. Kate appeared at the front door of Adelaide Cottage saying you want to know where I am I'm here I'm, I'm exactly where I said I was Adelaide Cottage wishing everyone well sending everyone love let's end the speculation don't waste your time any longer this is where I am this is where I said I was that that would just make it worse because everybody would say that's not really her she's actually a hologram it isn't true or something like that I think when it comes to the picture, I'll address that first of all. I think if they were going to release the original picture, they would have done that by now. And I think actually to quell a lot of this, they should have done that. I'm sure there were discussions about that original picture. Should it be released? And there's obviously reasons why they haven't. Uh, and I think they're not going to do that now, but I think they should have. I think when it comes to your next question about, you know, Kate standing at Adelaide Cottage, holding today's newspaper and saying, I am here and I am fine. Yeah. I think, first of all, she shouldn't have to do that. And I think even if she did do that, people would find something mm. wrong with it. I think you're right. People would say, you know, it's a hologram or it's, you know, me or you dressed up as Kate Middleton, you know, pretending to be her. I think there would just be so much speculation about it that actually, like I said, because the trust has been so broken and because those people who are so determined, so determined, whatever happens now, they are so determined that there is massive conspiracy theories and that everything we've been told is not true. They are going down that road and they're going to stick with it. And so she shouldn't have to do that. I don't think she will do that. I think we will just have to wait till Easter or after to see her at an official public engagement. 
Absolutely. And I think that's what they're working towards at the moment. Afia, thank you very much. I know you've got to go. So let me carry on with, with Sarah Houston here, our role editor. Um, do you think that there will be quite feverish discussions about whether it would or wouldn't be harmful, whether it would or wouldn't be prudent to do or say something to stem this idiotic hysteria? Or do you think they will have ruled it I out? I don't think they want start? to feed the beast right. here. Um, the royal family have always grappled with how much you pull back the curtain. Mm. You remember uh, the angst over that royal family documentary. I do. I remember watching it when it went out. Yes. The 60s, I do remember. And then yeah. the, the Queen, the late Queen, felt that it had been a mistake. Mm. to allow people in too much, that it had destroyed some of the mystique of the royal family. Yeah. We now have a very much more open monarchy. King Charles telling us about his cancer diagnosis, for example. The Princess of Wales, we were told she'd gone into hospital, she'd had abdominal surgery. The more information that is out there, the more people want. Mm. And in this social media age, I think Kensington Palace have found it very, very difficult to respond to this because they had said, as you rightly pointed out, right from the beginning that she was going to be recovering at home until after Easter. Mm. We're not at Easter yet. No. Um, and it, it, this has really taken on a life of its own. Do you think there have been emergency meetings? Is that the kind of thing that happens to say, look, we didn't think this was going to happen. It has happened. Do we ignore it? Do we hope it will go away? Do we hope that after Easter, when you appear, ma'am, it'll all calm down? Or do you think they're thinking, blimey, what shall we do? I, I think there are a lot of plans being made and a lot of discussions underway as to the best approach that they can take when the Princess of Wales is ready to come back. What we saw mm. over the weekend is really reassuring yes. that yes, yes. she may well be fit enough to come back after Easter. And we think it's going to be after the school Easter holidays rather than the Easter weekend mm -hmm. that she and William will have the holidays as they normally do with their children. How they do that, where she's first seen, how they manage the level of interest in that and how she then talks if she wants to about what she has gone through over the course of the last three months. So yes, very high level discussions will be going on right now. And in other royal news, the King has been seen around today. Yes, the King has been uh, hosting uh, an audience with Korea War veterans at Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. You can see him there. There was a bigger reception then later on, uh, which was hosted in his absence by the Princess Royal and the Duchess of Edinburgh because he's not attending big events. Uh, he also held an audience uh, with the uh, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Baroness Scotland. So I think we're getting these pictures, Buckingham Palace keen to see, show us that he is carrying on with these smaller meetings, his constitutional duties, uh, remind us that he's still doing those things, yes. but we're not seeing him out in public either. But it's quite important, isn't it, to see him doing these things and absolutely to be shown him doing them and to be, you know, to, to be seen to be there. Yes, and I've been asked many times, you know, well, the fact that the King is so visible in terms of videos that are going out and photographs and talked about his diagnosis, does that put more pressure on the Princess of Wales to do the same? They're in a very difficult, different scenario yes. here, aren't they? He is the monarch. Yes. He's the constitutional uh, monarch with those constitutional duties. And there is a duty in many ways to reassure the public mm. that business goes on. Very, very difficult for them, isn't it, really? I mean, incredibly this year, difficult. You have to feel some kind of human compassion, surely, for what they're going through. Yeah, you really could not have made this up, could you? No, but not really, really. You know, at the beginning of this year to find that we are now without the King mm. and the Princess of Wales, the future Queen, and both to have serious health issues uh, going on. And, and the King, you know, so soon into his reign to be having to step back mm. and withdraw from public life, this is extraordinarily challenging uh, for them. It certainly is. And so far, they're maintaining a very cheerful kind of uh, um, facade or, or, or whatever it is they're presenting to the public. Certainly, the king is being seen as much as he can, and he's being seen to join in as much as he can, and he's being seen to be, you know, cheerfully uncomplaining, as is Queen Camilla, isn't and she? And Camilla, yes. She's and Camilla's terrific. going to be in the Isle of Man uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. She's also going to be handing out the Maundy uh, money at a service on Thursday, uh, taking over from what would have been the king's duties. Last week, we saw her posing with a, uh, her own Barbie doll, yeah. for example. Um, always with a big smile on her face, keen to kind of reassure and also to, to show that the, the business of the royal family does go on, yes. albeit without 
its star players. Yes, and Prince William's also been out and about today. Too. Yes, so he has been in Sheffield today um, at an engagement for his Homewards, his big homelessness uh, project at Sheffield, uh, funding homes for homeless families, also a partnership with Home Base to provide uh, packs, starter packs for those at new homes. I mean, he vowed that he would people. end homelessness. And that is still his vow. Ambitious. That is still his vow in this Homewards project, which he announced. Um, and this was all around his 40th birthday. This was the big centrepiece of his 40th birthday. Um, this is part of that project taking place in s several regions around uh, the UK. And during that engagement, they were talking about the early years and about childhood and about education. He said, oh, this is really my wife's area mm -hmm. and she should be sitting here and I think that's quite poignant because of course we are seeing him carrying out these engagements on his own without uh, the Princess of Wales while she continues to recover. Sarah thank you very much indeed thank you.